Well, for atrial fibrillation patients, sometimes they will need to undergo PCI, and that mixture of the two diseases together has been a difficult problem to manage in that we need anticoagulation for the atrial fibrillation and for PCI with a stent, dual antiplatelet therapy. And the triple therapy that results of both those together has a very high bleeding risk. And so we've been searching for how to reduce that, and the WOOSH trial had suggested you could reduce aspirin and have less bleeding and, and still be okay on thrombotic events. But it was a modest-sized trial, so we were all looking for more evidence. Uh, and then could that be done with a novel oral anticoagulant? And so that's what we tried to address in the redual PCI study. So the trial looked at patients who all had atrial fibrillation, thus anticoagulation indication, had undergone a successful PCI, and on average they were randomized at 1.1 days later to different strategies. And two of the three were a dual antithrombotic strategy, and they used the two approved doses of dabigatran, the 110 and the 150 milligram twice a day dose. So that plus a P2Y12 inhibitor um, and we allowed clopidogrel or ticlopidine, ticagrelor actually, um, in there. And then the control arm was warfarin, clopidogrel or ticagrelor, and aspirin. Although the aspirin, in large part with Woost, we already shortened the duration of the triple therapy, uh, because that's what was being done in practice, to just one month following bare metal stenting and three months after uh, drug eluting stent. And so then the rest of it was warfarin double therapy versus dabigatran double therapy. But the concept really to look at whether one could safely withdraw aspirin and, and use uh, a novel agent. We were delighted to see for our primary endpoint of ISTH to find major or clinically relevant non-major bleeding that there were reductions in both dabigatran dual therapy approaches. Um, and so we looked initially for non-inferiority that we saw, but there was actually significant reductions in bleeding. So at the 110 dual therapy approach, it was about a 50% lower risk of bleeding. And even at the 150 milligram dose, but in this dual strategy uh, approach, it was 28% lower risk of bleeding. So when we looked at ISTH major and Timmy major and minor, all of every measure we looked at was significant reductions in both groups, and including intracranial hemorrhage was also lower. So the balance that we look for is, well, if we take away aspirin, would that increase the risk of thrombotic events? And so we did pre-specify a non-inferiority comparison of both dual therapy groups together versus the triple therapy, and we found non-inferiority for an endpoint of, of death, MI, stroke, systemic embolism, or unplanned revascularization. Then looking a little bit uh, uh, lower down, that amongst the two doses, there there were numerically lower rates of, of that endpoint for the for the 150 dose, and so really equal outcomes overall, and a slight 10, not significant, but slightly higher thrombotic events in the dual therapy 110 group. So without aspirin, the lower level of anticoagulation, some hints of higher. Uh, potentially higher risk of thrombotic events. And so out of this, I think it fits in beautifully to how we practice to try and individualize for a patient where if someone has big bleeding as a worry, um, that you could use a lower intensity anticoagulation in this dual strategy approach, or if not, you know, to be able to use and have evidence for the, uh, the higher dose of the 150 milligram uh, dabigatran dual therapy approach. Well, it's fascinating that uh, just two days before, uh, guidelines incorporate the idea that we do in practice but have a beautiful, simple figure of risk stratifying both bleeding risk and thrombotic risks to then tailor the regimen. And they note for someone who's at a high thrombotic risk, you might still do the triple therapy for a period of, say, one or three or maybe even six months. 
But for people where bleeding is of increasing risk, you might just do, say, one month of uh, triple therapy or adopt the dual therapy approach. And we now add a lot of new evidence in support of that dual therapy approach. But this idea of risk stratification on bleeding and thrombotic risk is a very useful one. I think now we have a few new regimens to uh, provide evidence of options to treat patients across the spectrum.